Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Does it actually, does it work? Oh, wow. Wow. Take that, Rockefeller Plaza. <laughs> CBS have gone all out this year. Not only do we have the Christmas tree, but look. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think this mighty CBS uh, corporation is run by a gentleman by the name of Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Well, what I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, when I came to work today, I was like, excuse me, Mr. CBS, sir, do I have to work on Christmas? He's like, yes, you have to work on Christmas. <laughs> and I was like, three ghosts will come to your house. And he said, they've already been. <laughs> and I fired them. <laughs> No, Christmas, of course, is, is the week before. It's the, last, it's the last week before Christmas. It's Christmas the weekend. It's Saturday, isn't it? Saturday or Friday? Saturday. Saturday or Friday? Is anybody awake? <laughs> Friday? Saturday? Was it that difficult? <laughs> uh, well, well, Monday's the 20th, Tuesday the 21st. Yeah, it's Saturday. I hate when Christmas is on at the weekend because then you don't get time off from the, this awesome job. <laughs> I'm very excited because, you know, it's, Christmas is getting closer. <laughs> I, my sack is almost full. <laughs> oh, grow up. Anyway, uh, the thing to remember is, though, that even though Christmas is coming, we're going to take a commercial break because you're probably going to want to know where to get boner pills. <laughs> The advertisers are going to tell them right now, Jeffrey. We'll be right back. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by... warm-up comedian it's over now you've been warmed up you are now fully ready for me <laughs> the lady going is, is it all right can I stop with my phony enthusiasm now <laughs> yes it is <sighs> You smell that, Clarice? <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yes, it is. It's a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> nice hat, Jeff. It is the, uh, it's the Monday before Christmas. Monday the 20th in your region. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's a, a great day for the United States Postal Service. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, why? You don't even know why. You're just doing it. You've been over warmed up. 
It is. I'll tell you why it is. Because it's the busiest day of the year. The post office is so busy today, it's handled more packages than when Ricky Martin, George Michael and Lance Bass were at a party at Elton John's house and the pizza was delivered by the TSA. That's how many packages have been handled today. <laughs> I really like that hat on you, Jeff. You look good. Yep. <laughs> Do you know how many pieces of mail were actually delivered today? Let me tell you, this is scientifically accurate. 53 gazillion. <laughs> With all those packages around, the post office are bound to uh, lose a few hundred. It's just going to happen. So keep that in mind, my uh, friends and family, when you don't receive anything from me. <laughs> it's not true. I send out a lot of gifts during the holidays. Every year, I end up putting so many stamps on packages that the impossible happens. I get tired of licking stuff. <laughs> Is that code? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Any, anyway, to keep up with all the mail at this time of year, the postal workers work really hard, so it's important to appreciate them. That's why I always greet my mailman with a warm smile and an open robe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Ferguson, got a package for you. <laughs> As I do for you, sir. <laughs> As I do for you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see my mailman, I like to sing a little song, you know, Hey, Mr. Postman, look and see, is there a letter in the back for me? I sing that, and then he acts like he hates my guts, but... <laughs> People always say you should give your mailman a tip around the holidays, so every year I tell the mailman, wear shorter shorts, you've got the legs for it. I actually have great respect for postal workers. My dad worked his whole career in the post office in Scotland. Around our, uh, our house, at the holiday, uh, holiday rush at the post office was called The Pressure. It started in, that's what my dad used to call it. Uh, it started in early December. My mother would be like, oh, and now it begins, The Pressure. <laughs> It's always scary when people describe something inescapable and horrific with a vague term. We do it here in America when we say, the situation. But... <laughs> did you just awe the guy from Jersey Shore there? What the <laughs> I did the, the situation joke and you went, ah. I wasn't like saying, let's be mean to hamsters, I said. <laughs> the situation. I said, oh, there's no awing for people in the Jersey Shore. The people in the Jersey Shore are legitimate targets for vulgar lounge entertainers like me. <laughs> I am exercising my right as an American comedian. <laughs> Oh yeah, the pressure. During the pressure, my dad used to work 12-hour shifts, seven days a week until Christmas. So he, 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 when he wasn't working, he was sleeping so to get ready for the next shift. So either my father was not there, or there was this kind of evil presence in the house. <laughs> we weren't allowed to make any noise. Don't make any noise. It's the pressure. <laughs> I had to walk around the house on tippy toes, which I enjoyed. It was an excuse to wear ballet shoes. <laughs> One day I will leave this country and go where I can exercise my freedoms. <laughs> my dad was a supervisor, actually. He, got, he, he worked up quite high in the post office. So when I got older, I actually worked at the post office during this time of year, a short-term job, you know, because back then every job was kind of short-term for me. <laughs> Not like this thing that just goes on and on and on. No, back then, you know, I... Uh, <laughs> I told friends I was working in the post office to supplement all the money I was making in my band, you know, keeping it real. <laughs> but anyway, one day I showed up late for work. I'd been drinking the night before, and uh, I, I showed up late, and my dad said, I'm sending you to the airport. I'm like, whatever, dude. How bad can that be? But it was horrifying, because it was sub-zero temperatures, and I was unloading these heavy mail bags, hung over uh, next to DC-3 engines, and, like, and I was doing all that. To this day, whenever I receive a Christmas card, my junk gets cold. <laughs> It's worth it. <laughs> I learned an important lesson that day, though. I had to stop messing around with hard work and become a professional alcoholic. <laughs> Do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. You know what I'm saying? 
So tell your mailman thanks. It's a busy day for him today. Uh, now, well, of course, nowadays a lot of people send the e-cards e and stuff, so it's a busy day for the internet mailman as well. <laughs> I don't know how the internet works. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you know how it works? <laughs> you don't know how it works. You don't do not, like, you don't know how it works. You know! <laughs> Do you see him nodding? He's, that's not how it works. Do your camera over there. You don't know how it works. All right. Give me a microphone. Give me a microphone. Damn it. Oh, by the way, we keep the desk over there because this studio is so small that we have to move the desk to make it look like we've got a big enough studio for a monologue. But we don't. And whenever there's a band here, we have to only hire tiny little little people bands. Anyway, let's go over to our internet correspondent and find out how the internet works. Good evening, young lady. What's your name? Gladys. Gladys, how does the internet work? You don't have time to tell. <laughs> He's as drunk as he looks. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. the beginning of the Christmas week spectacular <laughs> where we've covered a shrub in a light. <laughs> Time is it, Jeffrey Pierce. To tweet or not to tweet? <laughs> to tweet. We got here's a, there's an email from Sean in Woodlands in Texas. <laughs> Sean says, Dear Craig, my teenage son has been growing his hair out for a month and is starting to look like a girl. How do I tell him? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> He's trying to tell you something. <laughs> I got your attention, didn't I? <laughs> All right, this is from Julie in Carborough, North Carolina. She says, uh, Dear Craig, my boyfriend can't drive a stick. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh you know what? Is that cool? It might be, yeah. <laughs> my can't, boyfriend can't drive a stick, uh, slash manual. I said a real man should know how, which offended him. Am I wrong? <laughs> Now, uh, if you're a dude, you should know how to drive a stick. In your pants. Yeah. You said appliance, not me. All right, this is from Eric in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Uh, he says, Dear Craig, since you never show the emails and Twitters on camera for very long, how do we know you aren't making them all up? Yeah, don't. <laughs> Uh, all right, this is from Charles in Pearland, Texas. There's a lot from Texas tonight. That's a, that's, well, it's a big state, you're right. It's about the size of, what, Europe? Yeah. <laughs> Charles in Pearland, Texas. Pearland, eh? I think that's a website I've been on. <laughs> Charles says, uh, Craig, have you ever used a coupon in your life? My wife was surprised that I haven't. Coupon. I use them all the time. <laughs> Drives the people behind me in the supermarket crazy. Because I'm like, oh, wait, I've got a coupon for this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't 
seen coupons in a while. Do you still get coupons or is it all email coupons now? I look forward to your letters. <laughs> This is from Dale in Scottsdale, Arizona. Dale says, uh, hey Craig, do you find yourself always reading the employees must wash their hands sign in bathrooms? <laughs> See, when I read the employees must wash their hands, I'm like, well, I don't work here. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> um, all right, uh, let's see. This is uh, from Vito. <laughs> I bet no one's ever said that to him before. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks a lot. Sorry, this is from Vito in Orland Park in Illinois. He says, uh, hey, Craig, are you one of those guys who can sleep with your socks on at night? <laughs> I mean, one of those guys that can... What? Actually, I have to take my socks off at night, apparently. <laughs> I can pretty much do anything with my footwear intact. <laughs> anything, anything that I'm interested in doing can be done wearing shoes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just trying to think if there's anything I like to do that you need, you can't wear shoes while you're doing it. Nope. <laughs> nope, I like to wear shoes. I like it when ladies wear shoes. I like it when ladies wear shoes. Yep. Is that cool? Your move. In your pants. In your pants. In your pants. Shut the front door. In your pants. Oh. Peterson, but I'll win the next time. We'll be right back. At least you're at home. <laughs> my first, actually, my first, actually, there, I've changed my mood. Look at that. My first guest tonight is a very beautiful and talented actress, a very good friend of the show, really lovely woman, uh, smells delightful as well. <laughs> oh, yes. A little bit like lavender and vanilla. Aha, uh -huh, that sounds quite nice, doesn't it? <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Kristen Davis, everybody. Kristen Davis. Well, well. Look at you. Look at you. You look sensational. Thank you. I tried to do a little holiday for you. Wow, it's fantastic. Thank That's just you. the kind of vacation I need. I'm glad. I think you look like Mad Men at the end of the day. You guys watch Mad Men? You know, like you're like a little, little scruffy Mad Men. That's right. It's like good. I'm, oh, it is? Yeah, it's a good thing. Absolutely. All right, good. Okay. Absolutely. Well, then I'm going for it. And I like your shoes. Thank you so you can, much. You can keep them on. <laughs> I'll remember that, yes. Let me ask you a question. Do you, um... No, I'm not going to ask you that. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your shoes. Do you like to keep them on, you know? For... You know, there have been times I have absolutely enjoyed keeping them on. I yes. think it's a great but thing. But, you know, I have to say with the men folk, not so often. I, I kind of no, want the shoes off. No, men, yeah. men can't wear their shoes. I was a little concerned about you earlier. No, no, I was just for comedic effect. Some, no, you know... I, no I, I take everything okay. off. Okay, yeah, oh, no, thank yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, yeah. you don't want to hurt anyone. Or, or you squash a bug. <laughs> hadn't thought of that. Hopefully there are no bugs involved. You've never been to Europe, have you? <laughs> and by yeah, been like, to Europe, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> no bugs. No, no, no. No, no. come on. No. Hey, I, now, how, how have you been? Tell what me. have you been up to? What's going on? I've been on? good. I've been good. You got I've a been new having, show? 
Um, I'm developing a show. Really? Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. You know the crazy networks. Yes, I do. Um, We're well, not this one, is it? No. No. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well, what is it? <laughs> Which one is it? NBC. NBC? Oh, they're all right. They have yeah. a lot of real estate that's going to be open. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. They're, uh, they're fourth. Oh, they're, they're fourth. Yeah, they're... Yeah, no, I'm I always to be like nice. It. Yeah, I like it when... <laughs> I like it when networks are in real trouble because then they're not arrogant. They're like, please give us a show! Well, they try stuff. They try yeah. stuff. You know, and I love their comedy shows. And then this would be a, a single camera, half-hour comedy. And um, it's based on a book called The Happiness Project, which is a great book. Really? Um, it's a non-fiction book, so we're going to just, like, have fun with it. What, what happens in it, then? What's The Happiness Project? Is it kind of um, like, do people keep their shoes on? <laughs> Actually, some parts that if you would see each person has their own happiness project, so it would be like, what does Craig want to do to be happier? Out of so here! Out of here! Out of here! No! No! Did that come out of my mouth? True. I was just thinking it. I was just—I didn't know that's it came out. Not true at all. Oh my! You I didn't know it came out. Like, oh, out of the no. show! Out of the show! No! no. No, no, I love it here. This we, is my best thing ever happened. And we love you here. Yeah, no, we I, love you here. Yeah. No, but like, let's say that Craig wanted to, to, to dance naked in his shoes or whatever. If that would make him happy, then he should do more of that. It's about finding what makes you happy and doing more of it. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> you should come on the show. Yeah, I'll do That'd it. That'd be fun. Yeah, I'll do That'd it. That'd be really I'll, fun. I'll do anything you like. But I'm just developing Will it. Will you keep so. the shoes on? Yes. Uh, then I'm in. For you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've been developing that, which you never know what's going to happen, but then yeah. I've had a lot of time off, which has been nice, and I've that been traveling. Nice. Where you, where'd you go? I went to Ethiopia. Wow, that's... Yeah. Um... It was amazing. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. No, no, was I've never amazing. been to, I don't know, I've never been to Ethiopia. <laughs> Is well, it? it's it's very different than than at least how I thought it would be. I think because we've heard so many of the bad things that happened in Ethiopia, so mm -hmm. you kind of don't think about any other Isn't parts of it. Two civil wars going on or something? Absolutely, and yeah. famine and different things over the years. But th what's really cool is they're the only African nation who has never been invaded and colonized. They fought off the Italians, and I met these women in the in the mountains who actually like were the fighters when they were like 20. I mean, very intense women, very right, intense, yeah. yeah. Fighting off Italians, why? Yeah, well, because they didn't want to be colonized. But Italians come in, they go, okay, everybody, we make a food, everyone, dress good, it's gonna be great. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know, man, come on in, Italians. Like, if Italians wanted to invade this studio, I'd be like, help yourself. That's a good point. Yeah. I think it's a little different. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably being naive. I yeah, think a little. Yeah. I think yeah. a little. But that's okay. I mean, I, I respect that they defended their country, you know, like, on their own. Like, the women got out and got guns and was like, get back. Yeah. Um, so we went with Oxfam, which I, which I work now, with. Now, tell me about Oxfam. I remember Oxfam when I was uh, growing course. up in Britain. It's a right. very big charitable yes. organization yes. there. Yes. And it's Oxfam. It's the same one? Yes. There's different Oxfams in different countries. And I work with Oxfam America, but I also right. go internationally with them. What and does Oxfam mean? Oxfam means... Oh gosh, this is a test. Oxfam means um, family of oxes. No, <laughs> um, famine relief. Basically, Oxford famine relief. Oxford famine relief. It was yeah, scrunched down, and it was um, started to to say you know when there are wars, there are pe innocent people that are affected by wars or conflicts, right. and sometimes starved by say sanctions or food can't get to them because of the war, and that's not fair to the innocent people. We're not right. talking about terrorists or anything, right, right. obviously. So but don't feed the terrorists. Is what you're saying? We definitely don't want to feed the terrorists, right. but but we don't want innocent people to suffer as no, well. No, of course not. That was how it was started in right. 1946. So when I go, I usually go to work with women's issues that have to do with women's rights and children and um, usually teaching women self-sustaining skills because there are a lot of countries where women are not really brought up to be um, having jobs or, or there aren't jobs available for well, them. very, very positive thing to do with your time. Thank well you. done. Yeah, thank you. Thank fantastic. you. Well, I actually, I get so much more from, I feel like I am the one who benefits from, from it. I mean, every time I take a trip, I, I learn so much. I'm so Changed and are you, by what do you I have see. an official capacity with Oxfam then? I'm an ambassador. Really? Yes. Do you get your own? Do you get a little outfit? I wish. Actually, they, I am often dressed by the people that we visit, and it's yeah. always an adventure. Yeah. I have a very special handbag they made for me out of goat skin. It smells very interesting. Ooh, is there anything like my? <laughs> I've got a little. Th th well. I don't want to touch that. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is, Craig. What is that? You know what this is. <laughs> You've seen one of these I don't before. Know, I don't want to touch it. I don't Come want to touch on it. Don't now. Don't make me touch it. Please. I'm not making you touch it. I wouldn't okay, dream of that making you touch it. It's, it's a, it's a kangaroo scrotum. Oh. Uh, 
It was given to me by Carrie Fisher, who had been to Australia that recently. That makes sense. And she, <laughs> she, she picked one up for me. I said, wow, you're in Australia. Pick me up a kangaroo's really? nutsack, you ordered, would you? you ordered it. And then when she was here, because I thought it's a little intimidating, I drew a kind of happy I'm face glad, on it. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. I'm so glad. And I thought, it's such a good idea, I ended up drawing a happy face on my own. Excellent. We have a very vivid picture now with the smiley face and the shoes. Well, that's right. That's... There's a night out right there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Steady, ladies. <laughs> yeah, well, we're done here, that's it. <laughs> Are we? Yeah, kind of. It was fun. Yeah, it always seems to go very quickly. I know, Craig. Yeah. That's why you should, you should, you know, come on my show. <laughs> Is that code? <laughs> no, it means, like, it's fun to come visit you here, and then it goes really fast, so you should come over into my world, and then we'll keep you the whole day. Well, where, where, where is your world? Is it in New York or L.A.? Mm. I think it's going to be in New York, so I guess that's It's hard for me hard. to get to New York. They, they Maybe hardly... I'll make the Craig episode in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> will you wear the shoes? I will. <laughs> starting to sound a little bit phony now. A little bit. All right. Oh, Craig, what's that you're doing? That's a weird-looking smartphone. <laughs> oh, it's a book. <laughs> it's written by uh, one of the architects of what I uh, have so carelessly trashed on television for the last six years. He, a legendary talk show host. He's got a new book out, talk show. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, confrontations, pointed commentary, off-screen secrets. None of I that, that happens here. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, please welcome the legend that is Dick Cavett, everybody. Dick Cavett. Welcome, Dick. And, oh, yes, and, and this is one of the things you're allowed to do with your shoes on. Uh, yeah. There's been a lot of talk. Well, there's no business like shoe business. Eh? You, you had higher hopes for me, didn't you? Yeah, I thought it was going to go better than that, Dick. I really did. Do you mind if I put these on? Yeah, sure, uh, go ahead. It's yeah, a little, little kill chilly the smell in a bit. here. Yeah. You know. uh, <laughs> now, that I did not hear. All right. How are you, dear? You look well, lovely. Yeah, and you look terrific, you know, Thank for you. a guy who's... Are we both from Nebraska? Yes, yes we are. There's a lot of talk shows. Are the, the, we all come from Nebraska. There's, what part of Nebraska are you from? Uh, in, or, well, first Gibbon. Yeah, me too. And then Grand Island. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I left Gibbon, it was the beginning of Gibbon's decline and fall. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know, oh, oh Gibbons the well, that's a big, <laughs> look, look, hang on, Dick, do I you think go. anyone in that audience will get a reference to Gibbons' decline and fall? <laughs> yeah, that man there. That one He's guy there, yeah, yeah. The, the one guy that thinks he invented the internet, I'll go and that guy. <laughs> the man with, yeah. <sighs> By the way, I... I'm sorry I did the moonwalk here. Did it register as the moonwalk? No, the lighting's so bad that it just looked like you were. It, it just looked like I was yeah. gliding. Yeah. I you, could do how it long with did you have your talk show for? Well, uh, I started in 68 in the morning. Right. Then I moved to the night. And I did that on ABC until uh, 75. And then I did PBS for about five or six years. And then I did HBO and a couple other things. And, um, See that, that the, the daytime stuff in the morning? Is that more fun? Because I'm sick of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I didn't find anything fun about doing a talk show when I started. I yeah. thought, how did the gods do this to me? It's like being caught in a, 
surf and knocked down by a wave, and Tuesday is the next wave, and you yeah, get to your it, knees. Yeah, it's kind of relentless. And the next yeah, yeah. Did, did, it's almost like it goes on and on and on. I'm oh, actually wait. Fighting, no, no. There was a guy out here saying that earlier, wasn't there? I saw him on the monitor. <laughs> or was that uh, a DVD of yours? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> tell, tell Is me. Is that a declining foe reference? Because I'm lost. In, in, <laughs> in, in semi seriousness, yeah. when you started, right. did you have this happen? The audience sees two people on the screen talking. Right. One of them is just talking. The other one is the poor host. Yeah. And you're looking at the guest, and somebody signals over there, and somebody else letters a sign over there, yeah. and then they take it away before you see it. Yeah. And someone does this, and you think, why didn't they tell me what this means? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, and, it's hard. And it's then the next thing you see is that the guest's lips have stopped moving. I, I think very... No, very, very quickly, I didn't really care about that. I stopped yeah. uh, paying any attention to anyone in the studio because I realized they were all, you know, just as lost as I was. And, and uh, Yeah. Well, backstage, you said they're dirt under your feet. That's, uh, that's... Did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> did you think you were capable of saying that? Yeah, you know, I, I might have said it no one... at one point, but they, uh... Yeah. No, I, um... I, I'm not sure. What about when you get... Do you actually remember guests? Because sometimes I, you know, I'll meet people and they go, Hey, it's great to see you again. I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Look at you. You, you know, say, were we in high school together? Yeah, I mean, people like who are... Fa or famous people who I think have been on the show and haven't been on the show. Like Rhea Perlman. I always think Rhea Perlman's know, been on the show. You have she's such, never been a, on the show. such a thing for her. I hope you consummate it someday. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Well, you mean having Rhea Perlman on the show? Yeah, having her on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed her. to having her... On the show. On the show, yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. Hey, we should be a team. Yeah, we should do it. Let's <laughs> take it on the road. But I, 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 uh, I just, I, it goes to so many of them now. I mean, so many people oh, that know. have slummed it through here, you know. i tell you a, a quick Johnny Carson story. I was on his show each time a Cabot show was cancelled, so I was on quite a number of times. <laughs> and, and he would always say, uh, if this next one doesn't work, it's uh, Armed Forces Radio for Richard. Um, and one night during the break, he said, do you ever forget who you had on? And I said, oh yeah, there's so many. You know, you huck it. He said, no, no, I mean, I sort of do his voice. No, no, I mean, that night. <laughs> Yeah, I do that. Yes, you yeah. do. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And you'll feel better then, as he did. Uh, he said, I went home, and he must have an Irish doorman. He said, the doorman said, uh, so who was on tonight, Mr. Carson? And I said, well, we had the usual four guests. We had... Um, um, not literally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that would be a very said, special tonight show. <laughs> that would be called the big booking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, he said, I got upstairs before I could remember any of the people I had on. And I knew he was worried, seriously worried about his head. And then I could help him. I said, I came home one night after one of my one-person shows. Right. And somebody yelled out at a party over that something. Uh, how'd the taping go? And I said, fine. They said, who was it? And I said... Oh my God, they sat right there. Um, uh, uh, and it was kind of an obscure name. Right. Lucille Ball. Wow. <laughs> everyone, everyone forgets that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the last time I was in Scotland. When's the last time you were in Scotland, Dick? I've never been there. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't joke with you. Um, uh, no, because when you're a fan, you're, you don't want to risk offending your host who paid you $483 to sit here. Uh, oh, my personal staff! I, 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 I can tell you my, my Scotland adventure. I, went, I was in London. I was on the BBC, and, and then I went up to... Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. That's in Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's capital city. Yeah, yeah and on a, a wonderful train. Got into a cab. The cab driver was what they call a doer Scot, I suppose. He never spoke. Yeah. Drove a long way. I was there to see Laurence Olivier in Merchant of Venice because I was going to do a show with him. Right. So I went up, got in the cab. The cab went along. We finally got to the theater, stopped, and just before I got out, he broke his silence and said, 
you're covered, aren't you? And I said, yes. Arsoy on the BBC. Yes? You're too good for a Tootsie Fruits English. <laughs> Richard, I didn't know you could cuss. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, you are. Dick Cavett, oh, too wait, good oh, for uh -oh. English. Oh my God, do, uh, I have time to oh, oh, uh, do I have time to show you something? Sure, why not? If I didn't put it in was the it? You all right wrong now? pocket. <laughs> I was on? doing this in Rocky Horror Show once. Did you and I have that in common. Oh yeah, you did the narrator, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. and I had lived a lot, as you undoubtedly did. And I was trying to find a note, and I went like this, and... Um, a guy in the audience said, hey, Dick, you're playing with yourself. <laughs> and I heard myself say, I got people who do that for me. Yeah, nice. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, does it, what do you got there? This might be a nice a little stuff surprise you for you, oh, if wow. I can get it right. right. Uh, should be a question mark. Can gross frig. Can gross frig, yeah. Can gross frig. Do you frig. see anything in that? I have the anagram curse. Can gross frig. Um, uh, well, your mother probably never... Fer, 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 Ferguson. Uh, is this a, it's my, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson. Oh, it's an anagram of my name. Has everybody been doing can gross frig? Yeah, oh, it's, uh, <laughs> except Rhea Perlman. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, though, that you, you recognized your name in that mixed-up anagram. That's I'm a self-obsessed narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna happen. Like, I'm trying to What's recognize it? my name here. Yeah. You did magic. Uh, no, I never did magic. No, oh, okay. no, no. That was you didn't it. do magic? No. Yeah. And we're out of time, Dick. I mean, you should know enough about TV to know that. You're really putting me in the spot here now. Look, I'm, just, I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah, Isn't well. that right, folks? on the show tonight that Edward Gibbon, no S, wrote The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. I think he began it in 1811, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we have wireless. <laughs> you know what was interesting for me tonight was actually, in all seriousness, meeting Dick Cavett, I'm like, my God, Dick Cavett. I mean, wow. Dick Cavett sat there with John and Yoko. He sat there with presidents and he talked to everybody. And, and there he is, still interested in people. I'm like, <laughs> I've talked to about half a dozen people on a sitcom and I'm bored off my ass. <laughs> ah, that's not true. That's not true at all. I said it for comedic effect. I'm hiding my feelings behind humor. <laughs> my shrink says I do that. And by shrink, I mean... <laughs> See, I did it again. All right, well, I think this has been a f fantastic and tantalizing first show of the week before Christmas, which is on a Saturday. We have wireless. Uh, and that's about it, then. Yeah, so fancy an awkward pause before we go? Why not? I don't know if Jeff's doing an awkward pause or masturbating. In your pants. Get out!